All right, buckle your seatbelts, guys, because I have a hell of a game for you. I'm up against Silver Asura, and I'm using actually a, a somewhat new deck. Actually, it's it's pretty familiar, but I got well, I've gotten quite disillusioned with the 2DH format. I know that I've been a bit of an evangelist and an advocate for it in the past, but I've kind of grown a little uh, despondent over the format, mainly because of the fact that uh, I find that the $2 threshold for cards that you can include is somewhat arbitrary and has a fundamental problem that it fluctuates so much day by day that you can lose two, three, sometimes even four or five cards from your deck in the span of a week just due to some cards on the bubble rising above the $2 limit. And it's just too much of a headache to keep track of it. And I proposed a few solutions like an allowance of maybe 5 or $10 that you can use to uh, accommodate the cards that do drift above two bucks. But the guy who's in charge of the format has been pretty dogmatic and inflexible about it, which I respect and understand. And obviously it's his thing, so I don't want to really meddle around with it. But I had another budget format proposed to me recently that I decided to go and construct around. And that's simply $150 for the entire cost of the deck. You can include whatever cards you want that are legal in regular multiplayer community commander list. So you could play with $130 Mana Crypt and a bunch of basic land if you really wanted to. Obviously, that would probably not result in a very particularly good or cohesive deck, but you would have that option. So what I did was I went and I took my regular non-budget NIN deck and using MTG Goldfish, looked at all the prices of everything and stripped out roughly 34 or 35 of the most expensive cards and then found suitable replacements from my... 2DH list. And so the deck that I've created is sort of an amalgam of the two. And um, I think it preserves most of what makes the regular NIN list good in terms of its base acceleration and uh, very, very important critical cards like Veldican Shackles, for example, I've included, even though it's, I think it's the second most expensive card. And then looking at the Planeswalkers, I think Tezzeret the Seeker is considerably more important than Jace the Mind Sculptor. And I feel that Dak Faden is also important enough and vital enough for the way that the deck functions, as well as having extra artifact theft, which is always a problem with blue decks, that it's also worth using. And of course, I have to take out a lot of the most powerful things, including Jace, including cards like Cryptic Command. Obviously, Mana Crypt comes out, Mana Drain's gone, Treachery's gone, a few other really powerful all-stars, but I am able to use Cyclonic Rift as well, which is an incredibly important tool. Anyway, I'm, I'm just going to get to the game to uh, save you the trouble of thinking about that. And you, I, of course, will be searching my deck, so you can take a look at what I've got. And if anyone is curious about the uh, actual deck list for this deck, you're more than welcome to email about me with that, and I frequently post my email address. It is my first and last name, followed by number 88 at gmail.com. So, without further ado, let's get to the game. I'm up against Silver Asura. He's won the die roll. And I have an opening hand, which is, of course, completely unusable. You can see a few of the cards that have migrated over from the budget version. In fact, four of these. Um, are from the uh, are from the 2DH version. That's Frost Titan, Steel Hellkite, Great Furnace, and Repulse. Unfortunately, this is only one land, and it's not keepable. And in case you're curious, Mr. Silver Asura is using Zakama, Primal Calamity. <laughs> this thing is truly a calamity if it gets in, into play against you. In fact, I lost a game with my budget Nin deck a few weeks ago where the guy basically just steadily ramped up to 9 mana, and the instant he hit 9 mana, he just slammed Zakama. And I had literally not countered a spell the entire game, and I had no counter spells in my hand, and I couldn't stop it. And he proceeded to just tear my board to shreds and then kill me with it. I actually hung on for a little while by bouncing it and doing a few other things, but the fact that it's essentially free when you play it is pretty hard for a, uh, a blue control deck to deal with. And as far as the Naya commanders go, I'd say that this guy's certainly B tier. I think probably the best one is uh, Marath of the Wild, followed probably by uh, Earl Miststalker. Those are the two that you most commonly see. Sometimes has is on Tamar, but I think that those two guys are probably the best. Marath, just as a very aggressive and flexible commander, and um, Earl either going Voltron or just being generally d difficult to deal with. But Zakamas, Zakamas will kick your ass if it gets into play, so you pretty much have to stop that. One of the reasons why you play blue. But I have to mulligan this hand, so we pitch it back for six. Actually, I have an idea about how to handle the resizing thing. I was testing this before. I'm going to leave, because I think most of what, what causes that resizing is just the commander window popping open and closed. So I'm just going to leave it like that, and I think that solves the problem. So off the six-card hand, I actually get quite a good hand for six. You can see there's Thran Dynamo, which is another card that's not 2DH legal, but is definitely worth using in the budget format as it's only about three bucks and is incredibly powerful. 
and I'm not using the Gilded Lotus, which is painful, and uh, maybe tinkering with the deck a little bit. But in the absence of cards like Mana Vault, Ma Mishra's Workshop, and uh, Mana Crypt, the Lotus is a lot harder to cast. And because of that, and also in Mana Drain too. So some games you just don't have the ability to cast a 5-mana artifact. And uh, Thran Dynamo being 1-mana cheaper makes it a lot stronger. Palladium Mirror I love in the sense that it's a second copy of 1 Power Stone. And rather than having a coming into play tapped, it has Summoning Sickness. It's a little easier to kill, but also a very strong card that I am happy to use in my regular budget decks. I've got Everflowing Chalice, 3 mana, and a Scry, which is Negate. I'm going to keep that on top due to the fact that um, I don't really know what he's playing. And if he's got a slow hand, I uh, may be able to negate something powerful, some sort of mana ramp or something like that. So here we go. Turn 1, Temple of Triumph. Cool. I don't have to deal with the turn 1 Sol Ring at least. But I know I'm drawing the gate. So my hope here is that he's got something good at two mana, and uh, he's going to play another come to play tap land. I can negate whatever he plays. All right. Gamble. Wow, that's pretty bold. All right. Well, normally when people gamble, they get one of two cards. It's going to be Soul Ring or Mana Crypt. So my hope here, crossing my fingers, that either he ditches the card uh, that he gets with Gamble, and there's going to be a one in seven chance of that happening. But if he gets Soul Ring, that he plays another tap land, I'm able to negate the Soul Ring. And he discards a Sun Petal Grove, so that's almost certainly not what he tutored for. And he plays an Arid Mesa, and then he just says Done, which is quite interesting. So that's great. Buys me some room, I draw Handle Blast just in case he did get Soul Ring. So that makes me a little even more comfortable. I'm going to play a second blue mana here, and I'm just going to basically bluff a, uh, a, a more hard counter. Certainly no reason to play Nin here after he's gambled, because I'm really... I mean, obviously, he's going to he's gonna be playing something his next turn that he tutored for. So I will be negating whatever the hell it is. Gets Taiga. That's interesting. He gets Taiga, and I see green mana here. I mean, obviously, he needs to get all of his colors, but I kind of start to have a lingering suspicion about what he might have tutored for, and I kind of feel like it would be Sylvan Library. But, of course, he just gambled for the card. I've got two blue mana showing, and he doesn't want to run it into a negate. But I think that... Um, or uh, any type of counter spell. But I think that... Um, if I were him, given the fact that he's playing with a 9-mana commander, I think I would have probably... I probably would have gotten a mana artifact. Then again, I don't know what his hand is, and maybe it's all lands. Alright, so I've drawn Is It Boiler Works? That's another budget card. And I'm just going to play the Everflowing Chalice here for 1, which keeps the negate available. And um, bluffs. Well, it doesn't bluff, but at least it represents 2 mana. And it may get him to commit whatever it was he tutored for, because I'm pretty sure it's not one of those 2 lands. All right, four mana. What could this be? Oracle of Moldea. All right, well, I can't do anything about that. Unfortunately, I can just hope he doesn't get a land. Mm -hmm. And the Oracle immediately reveals mm -hmm. Rishkar's expertise. <laughs> that is a phenomenal combination with his nine mana, nine, nine dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Play the dino, untap all your lands, and immediately draw nine cards, and then play a five casting cost spell for free. That's pretty nightmarish to deal with. So hopefully we're not going to reach the point in the game where that matters. <laughs> and uh, even though there's not a land on top, of course, he gets to play a land for free. And he taps green mana and just yields to me. That's fine. Okay. Okay, well, I still don't believe that I've seen the card that he tutored for. He's got three cards in hand, which means I still have to represent the negate. Unfortunately, this stupid Swiftwater Cliffs comes into play tapped. Otherwise, I'd be able to play Thran Dynamo and then play and land and still be able to cast negate. So it's an example where the budget lands are really cumbersome. Because if this were just a fetch land, like let's say Bloodstained Mire or something, I'd be able to go get Volcanic Island and keep my negate up safe while almost doubling the mana I have in play. But unfortunately I can't do that, which means that I feel like I can just safely play Nin here and then play the Boiler Works afterward to uh, develop up to five to match him. There's still quite a bit of mana in my hand. Haven't really had a window to play Palladium Mirror yet either. Just representing this negate stubbornly, and he flips over Flamekin Village, which is a very interesting card, actually. Uh, that haste ability on his dino is pretty intimidating. And just in a red, green, white deck in general, and he, of course he gets to play it for free off the top, so now this Oracle has drawn one card. And then he immediately casts Path to Exile on Nim the Pain Artist, and honestly, I don't think I've ever been more happy to have someone do that. Because it thins my deck for a land, it's going to allow me a lot more flexibility in terms of deploying more of these mana artifacts, as well as getting Nin back on the table. I had no intention of using Nin for the foreseeable future. 
And he always had the option of just pathing in in response to me using it in Investing Man anyway. So I think it's a, honestly a, a, quite a misplay to do that. And then you get to go see the deck real quick here. Let me just lay it out. A billion basic lands. So a few things that are uh, holdovers from the, the non-budget deck that you wouldn't see in a normal budget deck are our 2 dh deck. Our Coalition Relic is in there. Uh, deck Faden, of course. Uh, what else we got here? Um, still going down the list. These are all budget cards. Lightning Bolt, a little bit over two bucks. It's like 235 or something, 240. Mystical Tutor. This is a card that I think is such an important tool to have and uh, is five or six bucks and is, I think, certainly worth using. <laughs> and oddly enough, I think both Ponder and Preordain are above two dollars. Certainly, Preordain is insane. It's five or something. Um, using Prismatic Lens as one of the two mana artifacts that's available. Got Rolling Earthquake in here, which is only about five dollars. Soul Ring is legal in the format because it's above two, but uh, absolutely mandatory. And uh, oh yeah, Strip Mine. Strip Mine I think is totally worth using. It's I think eight or nine, but. I really miss having that effect in 2DH. Just not being able to kill lands is really frustrating. I've got Temple of the False God in place of Ancient Tomb and um, Sulphur Falls just because it's $5 dual land. Pretty strong Tezzeret, of course, I already explained. Veldic and Shackles, best card in the whole deck. And um, I think that's it, pretty much. Yeah, War of Invention I'm running as well. I think it's a little over $2, but that's the whole package. It's very similar. I think it's it, it has more in common with the 2DH deck than with the, uh, the non-budget deck, but the fundamental core of the deck is exactly the same. And I'm just getting an island here because I've got multiple sources of red. He flips over Cultivate. I'm very happy to see him not get a land there. So he's tapping some mana, and there it is. Sylvan Library comes down, which is clearly the card that he, clearly the card that he tutored for ages ago because he hasn't played anything else that would be tutor worthy, I think. You certainly would not gamble for a four drop. That makes no sense. And I've been patiently clinging to my negate, and I stopped the Sylvan. Now he's got Cultivate on top, two more mana in hand, which you'd think, okay, well, he's down to two cards in hand. I'm going to be able to play Nin next turn as, as well as a bunch of ramp mana, but I don't know what the next two cards are, and he's already got six. So if he were to play a land, play another land off the top, Cultivate and play another land, he would have his Dino on the following turn, and I would have no way to stop it short of drawing into something with Nin. So this is super precarious all of a sudden. I can tell you I'm feeling very uncomfortable with the way the game is going right now. So hopefully the deck delivers some answers that aren't negates. That is not an answer. That's another land. Oh yeah, all right. Outside of, outside of this Vandal Blast, I don't think I've actually drawn any spells this game. I think, did I start with the Thrand Dynamo? I think I did actually, given the fact that it's all the way in the far left part of my hand. Um, yeah, Vandal Blast is the first card I've drawn. I think I actually have not drawn any spells outside of Vandal Blast, but I will have to soldier on. And given the fact that he's at least one turn away from deploying the dinosaur, I decided that I have to just develop my board here, get Nin back on board, and hopefully this involves completely tapping out, but it puts a ton of mana into play. So I'm actually way ahead of him. Fights, uh, what is that? It's seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten in play to his six, soon to be probably nine. But this at least gives me one turn reprieve before the dinosaur comes down. And even though I'm surrendering and he's been respecting untapped blue mana, I, uh, I don't really have a choice at this point. I have to just let my guard down. Thraben Inspector. That's strange. Oops, shit. Okay. Just pause and unpause there. And then he absolutely punishes my negate with Sun Titan. Oh, so brutal. God, that thing is so insane. So it gets the Sylvan back which I was so happy to have negated. And it puts a 6-6 six, six Vigilance guy in play that's going to basically put an extra land out every single turn and give him the ability to reshuffle around his Sylvan and his uh, Oracle. That is nigh disastrous unless I draw something right away and deal with the situation. All right, come on, deck. Give me the goods. God, so frustrating. Mana source number 11 comes into play. All right, well, I have no choice here. I have to completely bluff mana, given the fact that he's now up to seven. He could easily flip over two lands and be able to cast a dinosaur, so I cannot do anything reckless at all. I'm just going to have to wait. And I hope he doesn't draw a removal. There's a land on top. Ugh, so Oracle's now drawn two cards. Fortunately, he doesn't have another one. He's got Teemer Sabretooth. So he... Uh, what the hell did he do there? Oh yeah, he just. Oh yeah, that's right. Of course, he drew the drew the saber tooth. Is there, well, that's weird. 
Oh, okay, you're right. I'm I'm confused. Um, he of course was using Sylvan Library there, and he just took he took four damage and took an extra card. So he did some reordering and drew an extra card, and then put the Saber Tooth on top. So the Sun Titan regrows a land, and look at this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, let's pause. Okay, he's got nine mana. He's got enough for the Dino. So with that in mind, I have to just bluff my entire range of counterspells. I know that I don't have one in hand, but he doesn't know that, of course. So I have to not only play like I have a counterspell in hand, but I have to actually give myself a chance to draw one. So when he attacks with both, I throw Nin in the way of Sun Titan here and activate her for a total of, yeah, six. I debated go going all the way down to just two. I think that there are five cards that I could draw that would stop the dinosaur from coming down. But if I do one, one fewer mana and... Uh, and draw one less card. I open up a much wider range of cards that I can draw, that will stop um, that will stop the dinosaur from coming down because that basically just wins in the game. Because if he plays the dinosaur, he'll kill Thran Dynamo and he'll kill my uh, Ever Flowing Chalice as well and cut my mana almost in half. And that cannot be allowed. So come on, deck, draw six. I believe draw a counter spell at least. Come on, repulse four land a disciple. No counters. Ugh. So ridiculous. This is total PTSD from the last time I played against this dumb commander. The guy just rammed it at nine and I couldn't do anything, even though I've I've drawn nineteen cards deep into my deck now, and I've only drawn a negate. But he doesn't know that, and I've just drawn a ton, and he decides instead to just play Tireless Tracker out of his hand. It's just a little strange that he played Tireless Tracker before he attacked, but um because he was gonna get the Arid Mace out of the graveyard and he could have gotten a clue to investigate with, but I guess he figured maybe he wanted to bluff the nine. And then he just says, done. So at the end of the turn, of course, I'm just going to repulse Sun Titan just to keep it off my back and to draw into a counterspell I mean, to deal with this entire hand of land. Ah, oh, what the hell is this? Seven land? Seven land, Palladium Mirror, Vandal Blast, and Disciple. But this is the reason why Nin is potentially the strongest commander in all of EDH. It's because for just two mana and the commander tax, you can draw so deep into your deck off nothing but just lands. A braid. Okay, well, that's handy. Braid's super good because it's going to allow me to just pop the Oracle of Moldea, and this is on the turn, and of course I'm re redeploying Nin. And um, I gave a little bit of thought to shooting down the Tireless Tracker, but I think that the uh, the potential of the Oracle to just fast bond him into extra lands, or especially with the Sylvan Library in play, it's just the potential for too much extra card advantage. And Tireless Tracker, I don't know, not not that scary to me right now compared to the Oracle. All right, well, no choice. I just have to replay Nin the Pain Artist for six. And he sacks and gets a clue at the end of the turn. Let me go to my end step, and I can just throw away some of these useless mountains and come into play tap lands. But now I'm representing four blue mana, which hopefully will scare him off, given the fact that I drew seven cards between last turn and the current one. Actually, I guess eight because of the repulse, too. If I were him, I'd be scared of it. So he's going to have to pace his threats and be cautious. All right, tapping a bunch of mana here. Down comes the Titan again. <laughs> and he probably thinks, man, he's been really disciplined with his counter magic. And he doesn't know the truth. I've got nothing. Nothing at all. Why did it resize? Oh, it resized because of the graveyard. I'm going to leave that open too. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just going to do that and close this. So that doesn't happen again. I don't fast forward and break the drama by accident. All right. He's crashing with Tireless Tracker. And this guy, that's right, he can give haste to the Sun Titan too, thanks to this, this land right here, the Flamekin Village. It's so brutal. All right, well, I can't do anything but take 10. And this game, as you can imagine, is trickling away very rapidly. All I can hope for is that he just continues to respect Blue Man. He plays another land. Oh, where's his library? Oh, that's right. I killed off his thing. All right, Wirewood Lodge, so he has the ability to untap an elf. That's a strange card to be playing. That's not even an elf. Okay, deck, come on, deliver. Soul Ring, more mana. If I'm going to draw a mana source, at least it's that one. I can play another land here. And given the fact that uh, I'm facing almost lethal damage here, I decide I'm just going to play, uh, I'm gonna play Disciple of the Ring here. And just hope. I mean, really, what can I do? Just too much damage here. I mean, I guess I can block the Sun Titan again and do the big Nin shooting trick. 
but he has the ability also to play something huge with haste. And if I don't, if I get really unlucky and I don't draw a counter spell, then the uh, the nine nine will just crash and and kill me. I'll just die from I'll just die from the nine nine and these two guys attacking me along with haste. So I have to play disciple this turn as much as I regret it. Plus I can just shoot in or shoot the disciple if need be, depending on what he's got. I've got five cards in hand and pretty much no chance to win this game. I think at this point especially given he's sacking more clues, growing the tireless tracker up even larger. He sacks two more clues. No, I guess he didn't. Okay, Sylvaning up to seven. God, this is this is nightmarish. All right, I see him tapping a bunch of mana. And I figure, well, here comes, here comes the big dino. He's just going for it because he's got so much mana. And instead, he plays Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. Flying for a strike. Well, this would mean his guys are completely lethal. And the crazy thing is we're so deep into the game at this point, and I have only three instants and or sorceries in the graveyard to use with my disciple because I've just drawn nothing but land. But it's enough to at least hold off the turn. All right, so he taps some more mana. Oh, that's right. He gives haste to Gisela. And so this is basically a nearly lethal attack. This thing would hit me for 10. And uh, well, between those things, I'd be basically dead. So I've got to tap him down. Tap Gisela. Tap Sun Titan. Doesn't leave me with much mana. And actually, right here, I was a little pleased about how this worked because I figured I could block Tireless Tracker and I've got two, three, plus four more mana. He's down to just three lands, so he can't really do that much threatening, even though he has six cards. But if you notice, Gisela's ability is a source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent opponent controls that source deals double that damage to the player or permanent, which means that if Nin shoots herself, the damage is doubled. And I thought that if I used Nin and shot herself for four here that I'd actually draw eight cards because the damage is eight, right? Because I've never had that interaction before, but it actually turns out that the damage is just X. So even though the damage is ultimately doubled and she takes eight, I only draw four, which I was a little saddened to see when this next, next play comes. So he comes in here. There's no thought whatsoever to blocking with a Disciple of the Ring or tapping it because I need to keep at least one more mana available to not die next turn to tap. So I block here, and I th and right now I'm operating on the assumption I'm drawing eight here. So I tap down to one, hopefully using Disciple as some potential way that he might be able to interact with Nin that I can counter. And I'm just going to draw, f I think I'm drawing eight, and alas, it's just four. But Remand and Stoic Rebuttal acquired. Whew, okay, a little bit of breathing room, although I need to get those cards into the graveyard to avoid not dying. Another land comes down. Tapped, and he gets another clue. All right, come on, deck. Deliver! Impulse. Okay, that is awesome. Not only is that an instant I can get into the graveyard to tap down two big creatures, but I also can hopefully hit another instant and maybe draw into something that will really, really swing this game, like uh, potentially a Rolling Earthquake or a um, or Cyclonic Rift. Let's see what happens. Fire off the impulse. Factor Fiction, Felwar Stone, Kefnet the Mindful, and Muddle. Wow, okay. Well, that's very interesting. So I, I, I spent a long time considering the options here. I've got more than enough cards in hand to bring Kefnet online, which gives me a way to block one of these guys perpetually. And of course, if I have the time to go and get Nin on board, I can play Kefnet and use Nin as well. I definitely need to keep at least two mana on tap to deal with the dinosaur if he chooses to cast it next turn which means that Kefnet plus Nin, and Nin is all the way up to, I believe it's up to eight mana now. So if I play, that's five, six, seven, eight, Kefnet. Yeah, I actually have enough mana to do that, but I don't have, and I play one land from my hand, I'll have enough mana to tap one thing. But I ultimately feel that the Kefnet play is too greedy and too slow. And that means that I'm going to have to go with the, and I actually thought about using Factor Fiction too, because if I Factor Fiction... I can choose the pile that throws the most instants and sorceries into the graveyard, which allows me to keep tapping his guys down and maybe attacking with the Disciple, and it digs further into the deck, which means I may be able to draw one of those cards that I need. But I decide that it's just too risky to use Factor Fiction and too costly. And with that in mind, I'm going to go with the Sure Play, and I'm going to get Muddle the Mixture, which I will immediately transmute. And I thought about this too. I thought about if there was really a realistic way for me to... Because the thing is, is that this is a situation where... Just rifting him isn't all that great. If I rift him and I have Nin in play, then I have a lot more leverage because I can counterspell and then use Nin at the end of the turn and kind of get him get him tempoed out behind my counterspells. Rifting here doesn't really help all that much because of the hasted 
the hasted flamekin village and the fact that he just has a billion mana in play. So I think about if there's different ways that I can do this, if I can play Nin, but unfortunately Nin is so expensive now, it costs eight, which would reduce me to, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. It just reduces me to two mana. So I could play a land, tap one thing, counterspell once and play Nin, but this just opens me up to so much potential damage that I decide I can't do that. And I just regretfully have to just cast the, uh, the, over, the uh, Rift with Overload right now. I need to look up Baral, Chief of Compliance as well. I think he belongs in here. If he's not too expensive, I don't know what he costs right now. All right, so I cast Cyclonic Rift. He sacks a clue, of course, because they're all going away. And that's actually an added benefit of the Rift because these things are artifacts, so they bounce. He doesn't get to draw. He's just thrown so many extra cards this game. Now the coast is clear at least to attack. Because I'm certainly not going to be blocking anything big with that the big creature. I made a mistake here too. I should not have thrown away the mountain. I should have thrown away Vandal Blast just to get another instant or sorcery in the graveyard. Because having five of those is a really big deal. The Vandal Blast isn't doing anything. So he plays Imperial Recruiter. Which I was a little surprised to see. But he's drawn a million cards. And off the Imperial Recruiter he gets Palace Jailer. That is gnarly, which I totally understand. I think that's an excellent card to get because it shuts down Disciple, and I can't use Disciple to counter it. And it, gives him, it makes him the Monarch, so that is not allowable. I'm just going to Stoker bottle it. I'm not even bother, bothering to Remand because I'd rather I'd rather he not replay it and make me use both my counters, plus the Remand is better against a big thing. And I can ignore some of the big things anyway, like I can ignore the Sun Titan, given the fact that I've got quite a few things to tap it with so it can't attack. He plays a Lotus Cobra is interesting. It gives it haste. And now he's only got two mana available, and I feel that it's safe enough for me to untap here and block. And he plays this weird weird card, Benefactor's Dropped. And I've still got one, two, three, four ways to counter that in my graveyard, but like, who cares really, right? He's got eight cards in his hand. Sure, he draws an extra card. He's drawn a million cards this game anyway. It doesn't really matter, and I think that these, these spells are too precious. I'm just going to block and kill it off. That prevents him from getting two additional mana, at least, possibly three, because of Sun Titan. So I think it was a mistake for him to attack with the uh, Lotus Cobra, and he plays in Mountain Valley post-combat. And I wish I had Win Orb in my deck, because this would be the spot where it would just win the game instantly. So he discards Azusa and Cultivate. All right, still need some action. <sighs> painful. It was so painful. But I have my opening, at least. Time for Nin to come down. And I've got enough stuff in the graveyard along with a remand that I feel I'm protected from the dino, which might be his Hail Mary play, and I can tap down his blockers, and there actually is a way to possibly win this game. I'm going to attack. All right, so at this point, I'm really playing to a pair of outs. As you know, I have both Rolling Thunder and Earthquake in the deck. He's taken quite a bit of damage off Sylvan, and we're almost tied in life, which means that I can get just one more hit in with the uh, Disciple of the Ring and top deck or draw into one of those two spells within the Pain Artist. I have a way to win. So I'm playing the Palladium Mirror here, intending to just use a huge Nin activation next turn. You can just see how I'm just playing the tempo game here. He replays the Tracker. That's not a threat at all, because it's using up tons of mana. He gives it haste and charges in. There's no way in hell I'm blocking it. I take three. That's not a big deal. Plays a Foundry. Clues and casts this little guy. I remember him from before. Thraben Inspector. Sure. Go ahead and investigate again. Gets another clue. And then he plays... Man, what happened to Sun Titan, man? I don't understand. Why wouldn't you get Sun Titan? Could have gotten Lotus Cobra back or Azusa. There's all sorts of good stuff. I'm not sure where the Sun Titan went. I guess it's just in his hand. He didn't figure... He's still scared of my, my, million, my million obvious counters. I don't care about that. All right. Well, since I'm going with the offensive plan here, and i got to play to my outs, as precious as these Negate, Impulse, Muddle, and Cyclonic Rift are to use defensively, I decide I've got to use them aggressively, which means end step, I'm going to tap the Simulacrum. All right, come on, deck. I believe in you. Come on. Oh, my God, look at that. Earthquake, earthquake off the top. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. After so many blanks, after so many turns of frustration, the deck coughs up basically the perfect card. And since I've got three of these instants still in the graveyard, and all he's got is his little meager one too, which of course he'll block with. I'm going to tap his guy down. Play the Shivan Reef. And look at this. Nin attacking. I smash him down to 10. Tap my giant boatload of mana. That's 11. 
God, it feels so good. And I've got remand and I still have two additional spell pierces in the graveyard. And he's only got four mana untapped. So basically it's... And I know that one of the cards in his hand, or at least two of them, are the Sun Titan and the Gisela, which means that he has two mystery cards. And as long as one of them is not Angel's Grace, Earthquake for 10. Taps two. I'm thinking, what could he possibly play? He sacks a clue. He sacks Mountain Valley. He cycles the other clue. And I don't think that there's a zero casting cost card that saves you here around, around these two things. Quake for 10. Two to zero. Game over. Oh, so satisfying. Not only was this such an awesome game to play and to have it work out this way, but it was awesome. The replay cooperated. Thank you, Magic Online. I appreciate it. I will uh, I'll send buy some tickets to show my patronage for your kindness. And uh, glad you guys got to see that game. One of the best games I've played in a long time and a really, really awesome maiden voyage for this brand new $150 budget Nin deck. Hope you enjoyed that. And I will be playing a bunch of this deck. I think it's going to be quite fun. And I'm going to retool my... Brea deck as well for the same constraints. So you'll be looking forward to seeing that deck down the road. Take care, guys. See you soon.